The big tennis brands have been poking around pickleball for a while now, but they've never really broken through. That could finally be changing with the brand new Head Radical Tour Raw paddles. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Look, the reality is, up until this point, the big tennis brands have almost been frustratingly lazy when it comes to producing pickleball paddles. They haven't necessarily been bad, but they've always lagged behind the industry standard, which is a little annoying considering the budgets they must be working with. Now you take one look at these paddles, and it seems that at least head has wisened up, because they finally come out with a paddle that has a raw carbon face. Now of course, before we go on, remember that any of the paddles we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comment section what you want me to cover next. So, brand new raw carbon paddle. I had a feeling Head would be the first to come out with something truly competitive because they've always at least wanted to produce something good over there. One of the things you really can't criticize them for is that they've always tried to make paddles that are at least unique in some way. Usually that was in paddle shape and they're kind of keeping the same thing going here. They've released two raw carbon face paddles, the X and the Raw, Kind of weird names because they're both raw, but yeah, from now on, I'll be calling this one the X and the standard length one the raw. The X, as you would expect, is extended, but you can tell by looking at it that it's not totally identical to other extended paddles out there. They haven't given us super precise specs, but you can tell that the paddle face flares out a bit near the top here. This is something we saw them do with their gravity paddles in the past, so it's kind of cool that they're sticking to it with these ones. Flaring the paddle out near the top definitely has an effect on playability, so we'll talk a little bit more about what it does here in a second. Now, if it's not super obvious on the X, then the flaring is even more substantial on the raw. You can really tell how much wider it is near the top here than it is in the throat. Now, this one is 16 inches long, and the X is extended, so 16.5 inches long. In terms of weight, the X weighs 8.1 ounces and the raw 7.9, and the core thickness on both is 15 millimeters. Now, that's another thing that's kind of unique about these because it falls right in between the two more common core thicknesses of 16 and 14 millimeters. Now, there is something I want to touch on right away, and it's something I've felt with all the tennis brands, but these guys know how to make a handle. It's actually astonishing to me how many of the $300 plus dollar paddles have ridiculously bad handles. It actually makes me angry. I know it's not that important, but playing with a handle like this just feels way better. They use the same hardened foamed material that most tennis brands use to make handles. Ironically, not the material that Head usually uses, but that's kind of beside the point. But yeah, this method is tried and true in a sport where the racket takes a way bigger beating, so you know it's good. They feel solid, structured, and well-defined, and don't have any of that dumb exposed material like we can see on some Selkirk paddles, for example. You also get the choice of two different grip sizes, four and one eighths inches, which was perfect for me, and then three and seven eighths, which will be better for people with slightly smaller hands. Seriously though, handle, super important. I wish more companies would focus on making premium handles. It's going to happen one day, but this is the contact point between your hand and the paddle, so it just makes for a better connection overall. Okay, Luca, the handle is great, we get it, but how do these paddles actually perform? Because raw carbon face is nice and all, but it came out years ago, so what other tech are we looking at here? And the big question is, are these paddles thermoformed? No. To my knowledge, these paddles are not thermoformed. I couldn't find any thermoformed verbiage on Head's website, and the playability on court backed that up. I compared the X directly with a Vatic Pro Flash and V7, and it's noticeably softer, and it also doesn't have that same super responsive feel. Instead, it's a more muted and pockety feel. So longer dwell time than thermoformed paddles, but then it wasn't as soft as non-thermoformed 16 millimeter paddles, which is logical considering the 15 millimeter core. I do like this thickness because it has a nice element of plushness for resets and dinks, but then isn't too plush where you lose connection to the ball when you're really swinging out. There is one thing I want to mention, and it has to do with this unique flared off shape, but the sweet spot took me a pretty long time to get used to, especially on the raw. When you play around with a paddle shape like this, you're also going to be changing how the sweet spot actually feels, and because it gets wider near the top here, the sweet spot also gets bigger up there. That's good because it makes it more forgiving, but it also makes it a little bit sloppier because the bigger your optimal hitting zone, the less defined it's going to be as well. You pair that sloppier feel with that slightly muted response, and I have to say, when I was taking big swings at the ball, so on my ground strokes and serves, I never got to a point where I was super dialed in and super confident in my shot. On the raw, it was definitely an issue to the point where I would say this is a paddle you don't wanna be hitting out with too often, but on the X, it definitely wasn't as big of a problem. Yes, the sweet spot is a little sloppier than average, but it's more crisp and well-defined than on the raw, which makes sense because this paddle is extended and also doesn't flare as much near the top. I did customize the X a little bit, and I would highly recommend this because it really helped dial the paddle in for my game. In order to kind of normalize the sweet spot, 
I added quite a bit of lead at the bottom portion of the paddle face here. Okay, that doesn't look like a lot of lead because I took off half of it, but I promise it was a lot of lead before and it plays better that way. Adding lead anywhere kind of moves the sweet spot toward that lead. So by adding it here, you're kind of countering the flaring. Yeah, you end up with a bigger sweet spot, which may sound counterintuitive, but it ends up being more normal because it's more rectangular than diamond shaped. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's touch on the raw first. As much as I wasn't a big fan of its connectedness to the ball on big shots, this paddle is excellent for soft touch and control. When it comes to dinks or drop shots, I prefer the mushier feel I get from a paddle like this compared to a thermoform paddle because A, it's softer so I get more of that ability to kind of cushion the ball exactly where I want it to go, and B, it's more forgiving so if I don't make perfect contact, the ball is probably still going to go where I want it to. So basically, with this flared off shape, Head has consciously decided to sacrifice a bit of connection to the ball on harder shots in exchange for a more forgiving feel when dinking, which is going to make sense for a lot of people. The X definitely wasn't as good in the soft game, but it's far from bad. It has that element of plushness that thermoform paddles don't have, and it got even better when I did add the lead. Power is an area where you're not going to have a problem with these. As you would expect, considering what I said comparing them to thermoform paddles, they are a little bit under, but they still do pack quite the punch. For one, that 15 millimeter thickness makes them pop a bit more than average, but it's also the shape that's going to help you add leverage to your shot. Because it flares outward towards the top, there's more mass concentrated up here, which means you're going to have more leverage over the ball higher up the paddle. When you really get a hold of the ball up here, you can put away some big, big shots. For me, it was almost too much because I'm used to more more normal leverage, I guess you could say, but I did come to really appreciate this on overheads and flick put away volleys. Again, the sensation is a little less intense on the X than it is on the raw because the flaring itself is less intense, but it is still noticeable and I actually enjoyed it a little bit more in this more moderate package. Now, concentrating more weight up here is great for power, but in terms of maneuverability, when you tinker with the shape like this, you're also going to change the way the paddle swings through the air. More mass at the top means it's a little more head heavy, which takes away from a bit of paddle quickness. The raw is definitely less maneuverable than your average standard length paddle, but you get used to this pretty quickly. It was weird to me, the X actually felt more maneuverable, which I know sounds weird. I think it's more so that it's relatively more maneuverable to the competition because the flaring itself is less intense. Okay, I've been waiting till the end to touch on spin because I was a little bit confused for a while. Now, as you would expect, I spent most of my time with the X, so I'll explain what happened at the beginning here. So I'm hitting my first few practice shots, all good. The paddle feels pretty plush, more so than thermos, but then I hit my first spin shot and the ball just shoots into the ground. It felt like the grit just hadn't grabbed onto the ball at all, which is weird because that more plush response plus a raw carbon face should mean that it has that more grabby style of spin, but that just didn't happen. I've got two potential explanations. One, it's late October in Vancouver, so it's cold and especially humid, so the ball may have just been slipping a little bit on the paddle face. Two, and this is the more logical one for me, but this paddle might just take a bit of time to break in. Now, I've heard murmurings of this being a thing before, but I'd never personally felt it, but spin got much better on this thing as time went by. It also got way better for spin when I added the lead tape because the paddle was able to dig into the ball a little bit more. So when I broke the paddle in or whatever and added the lead tape, spin was good, but I do think it's still under what you get from a Prism or a Nova and definitely under what you get with a Thermoform paddle. I always like switching up paddles during a review once I'm dialed in because I've developed certain tendencies with the paddle at that point and I wanna see how they translate to something else that I'm used to. I grabbed a Vatic Pro Prism V7, hit a serve and absolutely launched it out of bounds and I think I did that because I'd gotten used to compensating for that less grippy feel on the X. Because I wasn't getting quite as much purchase over the ball, I was consciously hitting up a bit more with it and when I did that, with something else, it didn't really work out. So it is interesting because that tells me that spin is a little bit under what you get from some other paddles, but then I went right back to it and I really didn't have a problem with spin, so you should be okay once you get used to it. So, has Head just gone out and made two paddles that for $200 are going to be better than everything else? No. These aren't going to break pickleball, but for $200, they are very good value, and what I like most about them is that they are unique. Especially the Radical Tour Raw, with its very large sweet spot so far up the paddle, has a great combination of power and control, which you don't really get with many 16-inch paddles. I do think the X gets significantly better with lead, and once you do get used to its slightly different spin profile, this thing is very easy to get dialed into. It's another one of those paddles, a bit like the Nova that we reviewed last week, that doesn't go all in on one spin 
specific characteristic. Instead, it's very good at most of them, so that'll be good for players who want something more well-rounded. For now, though, that is going to be the end of this review. Remember that if you do want to demo either of these two paddles, you can come visit us in-store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.